the enigmatic Victorian Alpine region was the setting for the Australian launch of Husqvarna's long-awaited Norden 901, first teased back in a vastly less complicated 2019. In the 12 months leading up to its final launch, Husqvarna embarked on a focused and finely crafted online marketing push that was seen by an audience of around 2 million, making it one of the most anticipated adventure releases of the last decade. Husky itself was gifted a renewed lease on life in 2013 when it was bought by the Pier and Mobility Group, owners of KTM, Gas Gas and WP Suspension. In Australia, the company has seen its sales double over the last four years alone and it's clear the heritage brand, which has seen many masters over its 119 year history, has now found a home with a vision for the future. The two day launch began with our first face to face meeting with the Norton, which is a handsome chap in person. And then we enjoyed a tech talk and Q&A with Rob Twirold, who is one of the true tech gurus of the moto world. Eventually, a picture perfect evening settled over the high country and the morning brought out a mob of curious ruse and our opportunity to finally experience the Norden on Aussie soil. An occasion I somehow celebrated with helmet hair before I'd even put on a helmet. You've opened the door, have, yeah, yeah, you cannot exactly right. close. <laughs> Can't wait for this one. Tis a sexy beast, yeah? First impressions of the Norden 901. What a comfortable bike. What an amazing seat. It's so wide and comfortable. It's very different to anything I've felt before. It's completely different to the 890s. Immediately this doesn't feel like an 890 and largely because of the shape of this seat. So Husqvarna was bought by KTM in 2013 and released their first road bikes, the Svartpilin and Vitpilin. I think I said that right, but don't fact check me on that one. My Swedish is a little rusty since the Muppets were taken off the air. And this is Husqvarna's first full fairing. Hey, Africa Twin, how you going? Hey, Africa Twin, hey, Africa Twin. Africa Twin triplets. So this is Husqvarna's first full fairing adventure bike. First full fairing and big bore adventure bike. Let's not forget, of course, the 701 Enduro takes pride of place in its range, but this is their first crack at the full enchilada and it's an interesting makeup and it is quite different as a presentation to the 890s which is important because if this was just a clone which I think some of us maybe feared it would be quite boring The Victorian high country is in many ways the perfect setting for our introduction to the Norden 901. The endless miles of undulating dirt and tarmac roads that twist up and down the mountain ranges represent precisely where Huskies see the bike being most at home. But we were also invited to try the bike on a stretch of trail that was more technical to better find what limits may present. So giving it a test on a bit of a rougher track here, the apex covers itself pretty well. You don't want to hit these erosion mounds quite that hard, especially the uh, shock blows through fairly quickly. But it's tracking well and in this, the standing position is quite good, the seat even though it's quite wide at the back. It is narrow enough at the front to really grab with your legs.
day, any day on a bike is a good day. But I tell you what, this one might be better than most. We're up in the Victorian high country, an absolutely picture perfect day, riding the brand new Husqvarna Norden 901, which, are, which is a bike we've waited so long to get our hands on. And I can tell you, this thing looks better in person than it does in photos. It really has a unique look to it. That's pretty pleasing to the eyes. We've had an amazing day today. We've ridden a lot of road and a lot of trails. We've just been trying some tougher trails now and trying different suspension settings. So we've been given really carte blanche to do what we like here today with the bikes. The bike is somewhat familiar. If you've ridden an 890, you'll know the systems quite well, but it feels really quite different to either the 890 Adventure R or the 890 Adventure. It really has its own personality, which we we're all a little bit skeptical about at first, but it's winning me over 100% for the guys that want to do the adventure tourist style riding, maybe not the hardcore stuff, but the guys that want to take those dirt roads that wind millions of kilometers all the way around this country, this is turning out to be one of the bikes that they should be looking for. The triple clamps on the Norden 901 have been designed to accommodate the larger diameter WP Explore range, which is a more robust and off-road capable range of suspension than the stock Apex kit. I jumped at the chance to try a Husky with both the WP Explore Pro and a Remus slip-on pipe fitted and love the transformation of the bike into every bit the dirt weapon its orange cousin is. Okay, so we're doing the same section here, but on a bike with the WP Explore Pro suspension fitted. And I also have a Remus slip-on muffler, which immediately you can tell because of the, the monstrous sound coming out of it. And um, it's a lot harsher off the bottom. There's a lot more pull. I like it. The suspension is a vast improvement. You really had to be just tiptoeing through these sections with the WP Apex. But with this stuff on, it's quite happy to hit stuff much harder. Yeah, this really brings out the uh, off-road animal that's inside the the Norden 901. The pedigree is there, if you need it. Not everyone needs to do this. And that is the point of the original setup of the Norden. I want one for Christmas. <laughs> and with all the fun we are having, it's impossible to forget that we're there on a beautiful day in the high country. And sometimes you just got to take a moment to appreciate it all. Wow. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? And that's what these bikes are all about. This is, this is why we head out of our garage on two wheels. As the day was drawing to a close, we all took a moment to take in the views at the iconic Danny's Lookout near the Hotham Ski Resort. Baby. Baby. The stretch of road up there and beyond is the stuff dreams are made of. And after shaking off the dust from the dirt tracks and switching from explore to street mode, the Norden showed its prowess on corner after corner with a planted front end and plenty of power to pull through to the next bend. It really felt like the Norden was more at home here than it was in the dirt. I still wasn't convinced on the bike as a solid off-road ride, but we had a day of riding to go and I'd made some simple changes that would bring a much improved feel and far more confidence in the dirt. We arrived at the little village of Dinner Plain with plenty to talk about. A thirst for a couple of beers and a hunger for some brisket. Maybe. 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 
beer and go down and, and keep on it. <laughs> The next morning we hit the dirt straight away and enjoyed some fun flowing double trails that got the blood pumping. I noticed I didn't feel fatigued at all from the day before, which is a testament to the overall comfort of the Norden. And I was stoked that we found my favourite surface of them all to ride on, puddles. Until this happened. I honestly have no idea what I was trying to do there. But hey, I'm happy to entertain. With its excellent ergos aided by that amazing seat and cruise control that comes standard, the Norden eats up long stretches impressively. I'd consider the optional windscreen extension because I found the stocker is a little low and would have to shell out for the Bluetooth connection unit, although I reckon it's a bit stingy that that's not part of the original package. The Norton has been engineered to be as easy to work on as possible with just four bolts to remove the tank and four bolts to remove each fairing. The electronics are all gathered centrally and can be removed via two bolts, gifting access to the engine, which itself offers service intervals of 15,000 kilometers. The bike is originally fitted with a paper air filter, which in Australia is as pointless as strapping a fart to a saddle. Dealers here will swap that out for a foam filter which will suit our predominantly dusty conditions much better. To me, this is the ideal space for the Norden 901. It just eats these sort of dirt roads up. Not a problem at all. It feels really nice to be on this bike, on this type of stuff. It's soaking up all the small bumps. It's got decent wind protection. The seat is comfortable, so I'm happy to sit on miles and miles and miles of these roads, which we absolutely certainly have here. I made some small changes to the suspension, which make a nice difference. So I increased the uh, preload on the rear by two full turns, and the compression on the fork by four clicks. I rolled the bars forward just slightly, so it was a more comfortable fit when standing. Beautiful Lake Omeo. I've never seen it with water in it. You can usually ride straight across there. It's amazing.
Okay, so pushing the Norden a little bit harder on the dirt road. And I don't know where I'm going. So I gotta think while I'm talking, which is not a strong suit of mine, but um, look, it handles this really well. Uh, it's the, the only time it gets upset really is if you hit a good sized rock and you really do feel that all the way up through the bars in a way that is a tad unsettling at times but I mean in general it's uh, very impressive the way it's soaking up all the little stuff and accelerates on corrugations You know, one thing it absolutely, as we all know, has going for it is the, the 890 engine, which is such a lot of fun. And the Explore option in the modes really does lend a versatility to the bike on the fly that uh, no other bikes really do have besides the, uh, the Orange Cousin. Today is a really great example of a, a ride that the Norden was truly made for. We've had a lot of road pays and a whole bunch of those have been in twisty mountain roads and it's been a lot of fun. Now we're back on to the gravel roads and it's handling this just fine. I'm having, still having a lot of fun. And that's got to be 
an outline of a day on an adventure tourer, you know? Just eating up kilometre after kilometre of varied terrain without venturing too far into anything extreme that will push the suspension past its limits. But there again, no adventure ride has to have that as an ingredient. This, this can be an adventure ride forever. Apparently it was pouring here, wind and everything. So yeah, we were kissed on the proverbial for the entire two days. Excellent two days, really good two days. Perfect weather, amazing place to ride, as always. This place could never fail. No, 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 you just turn another corner and go, oh damn, look at that. Another corner, come on. Yeah, yeah, the hardest thing is keeping your eye on the track. And of course, the bike was fantastic. That leads up to the height. What's that? The bike leads up to the height. Now the bike surpassed it. I think today I got to know the bike a lot better and it impressed me a lot and I was doing stuff that, let me just look at this as a spec sheet. Oh, I'm not going to be doing that then. But it did it easy. I mean, we were motoring along today at parts and there's no problem on this bike at all. Uh, it's super comfortable. It's quiet. There's no vibration. It's a great bike to be on all day. Yeah, it's very impressive. Very impressive. The Norden offers something different enough for the rider looking to enjoy a true all-round travel bike, but not concerned at all with the speed by which they hammer through the single trail. This approach should entice riders who want something that looks unique, is based on a successful platform, and whose vibe isn't anchored to the more extreme end of adventure riding. This is an endearing motorcycle with a wide appeal that will enjoy being fed a diet of the endless dirt roads that traverse Australia.